Hi guys, Lawrence back. I just wanted to go back one step real quick uh, to where we had our JPEG originally. And you can see that the letter I is the dots up there. We want to connect it a little bit and then the C. If it was disconnected, we could have moved it over. At any rate, I'll show you how I go about doing that. It's not hard at all. I just go ahead and I open it with paint or whatever you want to use that um, can actually manipulate a file. In fact, let's go back to curl draw. Make it easy. So if you go into curl draw, and you've got your bitmap, or JPEG in this case. Um, what you can do is, once it's converted to a bitmap, you can edit the bitmap and work with it this way in curl draw, and it's quite easy to do. So you can see that we've got the eye right there. Um, you can go ahead and use your uh, magic you know, magic wand tool or lasso tool or whatever it is that you want to use. Um, and you can click and highlight that item. So in this case I did. And I want to go ahead and uh, cut it, which is Control X. That can get rid of it altogether. And then paste it, which is Control V. And that actually gives it to me in uh, a format that can be moved around. So if I go ahead and move it back on top now, you can see where I've created a connection uh, to the other file. And that's just one way of going ahead and connecting everything together to make it all one. And again, you can move letters crunchier together or whatever else, and it gives you that that hand manipulative, uh, you know, you're, you're able to do that. Uh, so you can see where it's gone ahead and it's moved it down which is great. And then when we go in and uh, convert it back to bitmap so it's usable, and then we outline trace logo, and now when you go ahead and do that outline trace, it saves it with the eye moved down there. And then you can go ahead and export it. Um, just and it's done that way. So now, show you how you manipulate this in Designer. So you got your blank board in Designer. You're going to go up here to File, Import, Import DXF File, and Import DXF, and then find the file that you just did. Now the one I did with the I dotted moved down. That was Graphic One. Or the other one was called Carbrite. Either one will work. I think the one that we cleaned up the most was named Carbrite. So I'll go ahead and use that one. And you can see what it does is it brings that DXF file that you exported from CorelDRAW into uh, the DXF importer. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and move it around if you want to or do whatever you need to. Um, AutoConnect is pretty nice because it actually you know, makes sure that you're using closed loops on this thing. But in this case, I don't really need to because I used a pretty clean file. So I can go ahead and add my new board to draw the board around it and hit finish. And it's created my vector splines. Now, in some cases, you're going to be left with a lot of things like little you know, onesies and twosies all around here. Uh, and you can usually just delete those because you just want that one line around everything. And this created that nice, clean, single line by smoothing things out. So now I can go in and uh, you know, copy it. Uh, go into my new however big I want it to be and hit paste and uh, I can go ahead and group these if I want to and that lets me go ahead and manipulate things around so that these are all individual vectors which is nice so now what I can do is select the outside one and in fact, if I really wanted to, I could do that too. But again, um, select the outside one, and then I can go into uh, Cut Path. And she's in the 1 8 inch cutting bit. You can see now it's cutting on the inside. So I want to flip the cut, so it cuts to the outside of that line. Uh, I want to use at least three tabs. I like my tabs to be big again. I, I just better safe than sorry. And then for me on MDF, especially, 
I like a 0.20 uh, max cutting depth that keeps me from having any vibration at all with my tool, um, which is what I really want to do. I want to cut down on the possibility of damaging it. It takes a little longer to do it this way because you're doing the pass uh, four passes to actually cut this thing out. Um, I've done them in three before, and it doesn't really hurt anything, but like I said, better safe than sorry. And then hit accept, and you can see that cuts out the outside. So now we can go ahead and select our inside bits and uh, go to Tools, Cut Path, and these ones we want the curve, the cutout to be on the inside of the line. And uh, again, don't forget your max pass depth. That's really important, otherwise you really take the risk of uh, breaking your bits. And you can change the inset if you need to. Uh, three tabs is fine, and in, in, in fact, you know, two tabs is probably fine on these inside ones. And hit Accept. And again, this is the one that we hadn't done the uh, the eye on because it was the most smooth one. And uh, that's it. There we go. Uh, I don't have my card. It's in my machine right now where I would show you how long it takes to cut this out. Uh, the other ones were about 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm quite happy with this method of doing things just because it creates a nice, smooth, and consistent cutout. Um, without any doubt at all what's going to happen with the machine. So thanks again, guys. I hope uh, this was informative. I hope you learned from it. And uh, again, uh, thanks again, Bud, for being the inspiration for these things. And uh, 